What's going on? I got myself a brand new Cobb Access port here and I've resisted every temptation to open it up and install it just so that I can do this unboxing video and share with you what it is, what it's for, who it's for, how it's used, and give you important considerations and things to think about if you're on the fence about getting one or if you want to get one and you want to be better educated about it. So this video is going to be kind of like for a beginner and for those of you who are wondering about the access port and how it's going to benefit you. So let's begin. Okay, so let me unbox it and show you what to expect inside. Of course, it comes in just a cardboard box. It's black, just like that. Nothing special about the box, but who really cares about the box? It's what's inside that matters. So I'm going to get this stuff out uh, just so that I have some room to work with here. Get the box out of the way. All right, so obviously a little quick start card that just gives some basic information and I'll go over that. You have your accessory box and then you have the access port which is inside this carrying case. So when you're done using the access port, of course, you can put it right inside this protective carrying case and you know, it stays protected and it's nice that they included that. So quick start guide with some good information to get you going right off the bat and a little protective foam and then the access port itself. So of course, I'll give you some more info on this in a minute. We have micro USB cable. That cable is going to allow you to plug in the access port to the computer so you can manage your maps and other stuff. You have an extra faceplate for the access port itself. Then you have a cradle for the holder. And then of course you have your obligatory, you know, cob stickers if you want to represent in one form or another. So that's that's that inside the carrying case, the protective case. And your accessory box. The accessory box has your OBD port. I'm gonna go over this in a minute. And it has the little adapter for the cradle. So this is gonna go on your dash somewhere. So you peel the sticker and put it somewhere on your dash and then you attach the cradle to it. And of course, then you put your access port on that. Now, this is not the only options. There are other options, but this is what's included in the box with it. So, all right, let's get to the main attraction here, the access port. When you pick it up, first thing that might strike you, first thing that struck me was that it's smaller than it seemed. I was expecting it to be bigger just based on the pictures and videos that I've seen online. Uh, they're usually like zoomed in. So I was expecting like a, a bigger product, not a bad thing at all. It doesn't need to be big. Um, it's just, just something that I noticed right off the bat. I'm like, Oh wow, that's small. That's, that's that was my initial reaction. When you pick it up, you're also going to notice that it's very light, very light. So it might give you this impression that it, it might not be of super high quality. Like when you pick up a, an iPhone or something like that, it's, it's solid and it's very heavy. So you, you think to yourself, wow, this is a solid piece of electronics. Well, this is more like a calculator. It doesn't have any weight to it. So not, not a bad thing at all. I'm just pointing that out that when you pick it up, it, it might be lighter than you might think it is. The access port needs to be powered via the cable. Okay. So it doesn't have an internal battery to it. You have to have it plugged in for it to work. Okay. This cable is the cable that is going to go to your car's OBD port, the onboard diagnostics port. It's going to plug in there. And then the other end is going to plug in to your access port. If you're going to permanently mount the access port to your car, you have to plug this into your OBD port and then route this cable somewhere out of the way in a nice professional manner. And then obviously reach to the other side, wherever you want your access port to be at with, with this end of the cable. So for my particular car in the next video, I'm going to show you what I ended up doing for that. What the access port's gonna allow you to do, it's gonna allow you to tune your car with the off the shelf maps that come built into it. You can also get a custom pro tune and add it to your access port. The access port will also act as a code reader, so it can read codes, engine trouble codes, and it'll also allow you to clear those codes. It can show you engine parameters via gauges that'll interface right on the screen. So just about any parameter that your car will allow you to see via the onboard diagnostics port, you can show through the access port. It has data logging capabilities. So if you want to monitor the performance of your car over a period of time, then you can do that with the access port. 
It even helps you measure the performance of your car uh, and give you zero to 60 times, quarter mile times, things of that nature. So those are the, the basic features of the access port itself. Okay, so what's the access port for? When you modify your car by adding performance parts to it, you can change the airflow or fuel delivery characteristics of the car from when it was manufactured. You can start running lean or you can start over boosting or knocking or you can start showing any number of symptoms because the computer doesn't know that you changed parts and changed things like fuel and airflow. So a tune is the way to let the computer know how to compensate for the changes that you did to your car. But the access port can do more than that because you can tune the car without having any mods at all. This can do things like change shift points. It can smooth out the power curve of the car, change the responsiveness of the car, all without any mods at all. When cars are designed, the manufacturer has to take into consideration things and laws that the consumer, especially in a sports car, might not even care about. There's emissions requirements, fuel economy considerations, and even restrictive additions to the car, like the tumbler generator valve. So a tune, even without any power mods, can remove some of those restrictions and make the car better. The access port allows you to tune your car. It will come preloaded with what are known as off-the-shelf maps, which are basically tunes which have been worked out ahead of time based on the performance characteristics of the car model. So for example, I bought my access port for my 2017 WRX. So Cobb thoroughly tested the, the car and came up with the tunes that would work for it. So I don't have to take the car in. I can use one of those off the shelf maps, which are generic. The only considerations are that you have to look at the map that you want to load and make sure that you abide by the requirements of the map. So some maps will call for certain fuels with certain octane rating and some will have parts requirements like a, a, an intake or an exhaust of some kind. So as far as the access port is concerned, you can buy staged packages, say stage one or stage two, install the parts for that particular package and then install the off the shelf map for those particular parts and that particular package. That's because Cobb already tested that particular car with those particular parts and already has a proper tune for it. Now, just to be clear, this is not the only way to tune a car. If you want a completely custom tune based on your exact car, you can bring the car to a tuner who can do a pro tune, which you can add to your access port. You might have to do that if you install mods which are not part of the stage package. So technically, when you hear the word pro tune, that's a custom tune for the access port. But nowadays, people take it to mean an ECU tune, right? Just, just any ECU tune. So if you don't want to get an access port, you can get a custom ECU tune for your car, usually for cheaper, but obviously you won't get the access port. For all intents and purposes, a custom ECU tune will probably be superior to an off-the-shelf tune, if done right. I just want to point that out so people realize that this is not the only choice to tune your car. So obviously if you get an ECU tune or you do a, uh, a tune with an access port, any tune of any kind should be the last mod in your, in your path to the tune. So if you needed to put any parts in your car, you have to do that first and right after you install the parts, you could tune the car for those parts. So who can use the access port? Who's it for? There's different types of access ports for different car manufacturers and even different generations within a manufacturer. So make sure you get the access port made for your car and made for your particular year. So right here, AP3 SUB004, that's the model number for my access port. The AP3 denotes that this is access port version three. SUB obviously means Subaru, so this particular access port is for Subaru and 004 will denote the model year for the car. So make sure that you get the proper model number for your particular car or it will not work. How can you use the access port? You can tune the car with it and then you can put the, the access port in its, in its box and uh, put it away if you want. But better yet, you can tune the car and then use the access port to monitor your engine and the tune that you just installed for a while. That way you can make sure that everything is running as intended and everything's perfect um, and that you're not experiencing any knock or, or any symptoms. And then you can put it away if you want. 
or you can continually use the gauges within it to always monitor the car. And you can do that obviously by permanently routing the cable and just leaving it installed in the car. So you have options. So of course you can just install the tune and put the access port away afterwards and be done with it if that's what you want. So I wanna go over a few important things that you should consider uh, if you're thinking about getting the access port. The access port can only be used on one car at a time. So it has to be married to your particular car. You can only do one car with it, as in like if you have multiple WRXs or, or whatever car you happen to have, if you have multiple of them, you can't buy one access port for all your cars, even if they're your, your cars. Um, obviously, you can't buy an access port, install a tune with it, and then give it to your friends so that they can tune their car with it. It doesn't work that way. When you install the access port in your car, that's it. The access port is married to your car, so you can't share it. That's another important consideration when you're buying the access port. So the price of the access port is regulated. So most of the time you're not going to see big discounts and big, big deals uh, for the access port across different vendors. There's, there's usually the exact same price for the access port no matter where you get it from. So if you decide to get the access port used, you have to make sure that the access port is not married to the car of the person selling it. You have to make sure because if you buy the access port with it married and then the seller disappears, you would have to send the access port to Cobb to have it relicensed and that's going to cost some money and you'll, you'll end up spending more money than what the access port would have cost you buying it new. So if you see the access port on Craigslist or on eBay and you see it for very cheap, if it sounds too good to be true, it pro it's probably married to someone's car and you're not going to be able to use it on yours. Another thing about that is that you can bring your car back to stock. So that's a very big benefit of using the access port. If you need to take the car in to, to be serviced at the dealer and you don't want the dealer to know that you tuned your car, you can bring it back to stock. If you, if you need to do any sort of warranty claim or anything like that, and it literally takes minutes. So you could, you could install your tune, install whatever stage package that you wanted, and if you think that whatever you installed on your car will void your warranty, then you can bring the car back to stock and then you can reflash the ECU back to stock before you bring it in for service. There's, there's no guarantee that they're not going to find out from other means, but it's a feature of the access port that you can uninstall it quickly. The maps that come with it, the preloaded, uh, or the maps that you can download for your particular car from the Cobb website, they undergo revisions every now and then, which is great because sometimes they'll find bugs in the maps or they may find features to add to a particular map. So make sure you have the latest map revision for the map that you want for your particular car. Same thing with the access port itself. And that should be the very first thing you do when you buy the access port anyways. And I'm going to go over that in the next video. If you get in an access port, it's obviously going to cost you a lot more, generally a lot more than just a tune will cost you to, to have your car tuned, right? So if you go to, to a tuner and you have your car tuned, that's going to cost you far less than the access port. But one good thing about the access port is all those things that I just mentioned, but also they hold their value pretty well. So when you're done using the access port, if you take good care of it and you're done using the access port, you can sell it and get back a good portion of the money that you spent in buying it in the first place. So make sure you care for the access port. Make sure you take good care of it and that you keep it clean and scratch free. And when you're done using it, if you're done using it someday and, or you get rid of your car or something like that, you can go ahead and just sell the access port. They're, they're very high demand all the time. Normally when somebody's selling it, especially if it's a good deal, it'll go right away. Also, if you wanted to buy it and you didn't want to wait to have it delivered, you can check in the Cobb website for distributors in your local area, just like I did. I went and checked and I found a distributor. I called them up and asked them if they had it in stock. Sure enough, they did. And I went and picked them up from them. Now, keep in mind, the access port price is regulated. So if you go to a distributor and they're charging you more than the Cobb website, you need to be asking why. All right, so I don't want to waste any more time. I'm very excited. I want to go install it. And of course, I'm going to bring my camera along with me. So the next video, you can expect an installation how-to, and I will show you a tune in real time. Then, for those of you who have a WRX CVT, I will make specific videos reviewing each map and showing you the comparisons. So don't go too far. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.